Hello everyone, my name is Comfort Yasero. Today, I'm going to entertain you with a story titled Obani Gakon, the fiery duke of Udo, a city of the old Benin kingdom in Nigeria. Obani Gakon was a duke of Udo near Benin city. At Obani Gakon's palace, he did most of the talking. The chiefs, in their fear, repeated in accord with whatever he said. When he laughed, no one ever dared to laugh along with him. He said that the teeth plugged from the slaves or chiefs were his armor against fate. This coat of armor was truly made of human teeth. He reminded all that whoever challenged him would literally be playing with the skin of his own teeth. It was highly rumored that Opanigakon was highly invincible and all believed that no mortal power could ever hurt him. Often, he became angry with his chiefs for daring to repeat his sayings after him. Whenever he was angry at them, he ordered them to join the forced labor of digging the great moat around Udo. The elders of the Benin Kingdom soon had a meeting on the matter. Every head was bowed except that of Odion Weres, the leader of the chiefs. He wore a frightened look, but his eyes were bright with determination. He cleared his throat and scratched his receding forehead as he opened his mouth to speak. Omogwe's death is a most disturbing and unfortunate one. Something needs to be done. I have sent an emissary to the Obaugwala, the king, asking for his help. Edigi, one of the elders, jumped up bearing the wide gap in his upper gum. My people, he called, enough of these soft talks. How many of us still have our all four upper teeth in our mouths? How many? Enough of cowing away like mice. Let us take up arms. The second chief disagreed that the case at hand was not that of a physical combat. The others agreed with him. Then Oboname, the witch doctor, who had attended the meeting, got up and danced around them, promising to handle everything by himself. Odiowere agreed with him. Edigin laughed at him, and still others agreed with him, saying that this was a spiritual matter, that it was under their very eyes that Opanigakon's men came and took away two of their chiefs who were later returned without their four upper teeth. Shortly, the Oba of Benin Kingdom, Oba Ogola, came up with a solution. He consulted with the traditional oracle which advised that the true solution was in giving his daughter in marriage to Opani Gakon, that this marriage would bring peace to Udo. Obaogwala sent his daughter, who will be the princess, to go to Udo to marry Opani Gakon. Ubi's mother was livid because Ubi was already in the early stage of engagement with the chief warrior of the Benin kingdom named Oza. However, Ubi herself decided to go and marry Opanigakon to bring peace to the whole Bini kingdom. Ubi said that to her mother, Mother, please stay out of this. I know what I'm doing. I'm not a baby. Turning to her father, she repeated, Father, if it requires death, I am ready. Peace must reign. We went to Udo and got married to Opanikakon, singing the wedding chants of Ohaga Nyaro. Ayo, oh, 
Aganiaro. Ayo. After the wedding, Okmanigakon's other wives were not happy at all and treated we with disdain. But we did not mind them. She focused on her mission to disarm Okmanigakon and bring peace to do and to the whole of the Benin kingdom. At the same time, Okmanigakon was spoiling Uri. He saw her as a way of taking over the whole of the Benin kingdom and thereby overthrow Uri's father. He often sent Omada, his servant, to bring Uri to him so that he could ask her many questions about her father, Opa Ogwala. Soon enough, Ubi understood that her new husband, Okwanigyako, wanted to overthrow her father. She said to herself, one of her tribal saints, which states that when a misfortune is going to befall a snail, it does not take cover under leaves. She spent time studying Okwanigyako quietly, and soon enough, she learned that the secret to his power was in the hands of one of his young servants. Once she knew this, she quietly sent her maid to her father in Benin City, the capital of the kingdom, saying that she wanted to urgently see her father's chief, to see her father's chief warrior, Oza, and her father's trusted advisor, Chief Edogun Atudo, on a day before the Ekem market day. They were to be disguised as hunters and hide near the river of Udo. Oga is the name of the river before sunrise. She explained in the message that at the river, a young errand boy of Okmanigako would come along singing. She told them that in the boy's hands, lies their faith and that of Opanigyako. That's, that's the story for now. I'll continue the rest of the story in part two. I hope you enjoyed this part.